It took a lot of counting, but he finally made it to the eighth floor. We only have seven more minutes. Any way you can do pickups faster? Your next pickup is on four. George sure wished he had a way to tell what floor he was on without having to start at one. Elevators had signs that told you what number came next, even if you were somewhere in the middle. <gasps> George could make a sign, too. <laughs> Certainly! Uh, I'm never gonna find a parking spot. Wow, thanks. Now, I just have to go to the ninth floor, which is a long, long way away. Using his numbered fingers, all George had to do was count down from floor eight to floor four. <laughs> Seven. Six. Five, four. At least he hoped it was four. His counting system worked. Ah, here we go. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're here. Hey, your next pickup's on the tenth floor. No need to start at one. George's fingers told him exactly how to count from four to ten. George was on the tenth floor, but his delivery was practically on ten and a half. Take everything to the first floor quickly. Pepe El Loco will be here any second. <laughs> Nice nose. Hello, my name is Pepe. Oh, is that for me? Uh -huh. ah, my gadget. Oh, thank you. Now, to get to the ninth floor for my show. Right, the elevators are tricky. Huh? Hold this for me, will you? Huh? Can you believe how hard it is to find a parking spot at this joint? The elephants need a garage. Huh? Eh? Eh, what floor are we on? I was busy with my gadget and forgot to count. I was busy trying to figure out what your gadget was. I, I didn't count either. We'll have to start all over. Uh, I'll be late for my show. Ah! <laughs> oh, the seventh floor. That monkey is a genius. He certainly is. Introducing the world's greatest clown, Pepe El Loco, and his mystery gadget. Ah! <laughs> and it was all made possible by George, a monkey you can really count on. Vacuum might pick them up. Ah. Hmm. Ah. <laughs> but then 
again, maybe not. A rug might cover his toys. Don't go! George! Uh. You'll be amazed how easily it fits right back underneath the bed. Uh. That's what George needed, and it was simple. He got plywood from the basement so he could put his toys on it and tuck them away under his bed. <laughs> the pyramid was too tall. Now it was perfect. This one moves so smoothly. It rolled. Things that roll move smoothly. George found things that roll. Balls rolled right out. And hockey pucks were no better. Train box cars were just right. <laughs> we want to do something for more than three minutes. Let's play catch. <laughs> what are you doing, George? <laughs> Why didn't I think of that? Face it, you're no monkey. <laughs> the storm's over. <gasps> ah! He found it. The missing one. <laughs> That's the world's crankiest polar bear. Guardian of the one. <laughs> stop him! I want the one! Stop! Stop! Give me the one! No, give it to me! I want it! It's mine! Can Fearless George ever get out of this? Yes. <laughs> With the aid of his loyal pterodactyl, Hansel. Well, that was certainly an unexpected twist. He returned the missing one to where it belonged. <laughs> Another mission accomplished by Fearless George, hero of heroes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let's play again. This time, George is a wizard trapped on the South Pole by penguins. And if we run out of time, we just roll it under the bed. Whether he was being a wizard or cleaning up toys, Fearless George was up to any challenge. <laughs> Grandma, but how he gets too hot exercising outside. Hogs do that sometimes, sweetie. If George couldn't bring Howie inside where it was cool, uh -huh. he'd have to bring the inside cool outside to Howie. Uh -huh. All right, George.
George needed to make his hog exerciser turn, even if it wasn't plugged in. Now, what made that fan turn? If George had a wheel, he could make his fan turn too. Where could he find a wheel? Now, instead of being powered by electricity, George's hog exerciser fan was powered by George. And Howie could comfortably exercise for 30 minutes. Now all he needs to do is practice walking for the judges. Huh? <laughs> yep, it's step four. We better get started. Every day, Howie had the same routine. He exercised, had a bath, got brushed, practiced walking for the judge, <laughs> and got an apple. Exercised, had a bath, got brushed, practiced walking for the judge, and got an apple. How he practiced so much, he knew it by heart. Yeah. Today's the day. Ready for the fair, Ulysses? George and Howie were ready, too. Oh. Howie had exercised, been bathed, and brushed. Now, he had to walk for the judges. And then he'd get his apple. Well, uh, you're up next. Number 88. And the next contestant is number 88, Howie the Hall. George, where are you going with that? <laughs> Sorry, but you can't take that into the ring. It's against the rules. Huh? But that's how we always practiced. How can Howie win without it? Final call for Howie. <laughs> Howie was worried. His friends didn't seem to know what to do. But Howie knew. It was always the same. He exercised, got bathed, got brushed. <laughs> and now he was supposed to walk for the judges. Then he'd get his apple. <laughs> Besides having a hard time keeping cool and liking apples, pigs are really, really smart. We have a winner! It's then put in this giant sifter to remove husks or hulls, which are the parts of the grain we don't eat. <laughs> that is so cool! And then finally, it's put in bags and it's ready to be shipped to the warehouse. Ah. Wow! Any questions? Yes. 
Could we have one bag of masa, please? Oh, I'm so sorry. We don't have any masa. This is all flour. Oh, what? I'm sorry. Since there's been very little rain, the drought delayed the corn harvest. No corn, no masa. Where does your corn come from? We get ours from local farmers. George knew a farmer who just might have some corn. Look at my new water tank, George. It stores rainwater for my crops. <laughs> what? What is it? George pointed the way to Rankin's farm. <laughs> this is wonderful! It's true the drought delayed the harvest, but thanks to my water tank, we had just enough to get through. I've been harvesting all day. I'm almost afraid to ask, but you say you've been harvesting all day? Yes. So my question is, do you have corn now? Yes. <laughs> you must really like corn. <laughs> Not only did Mr. Rankins have fresh corn, but he also had dried corn that could be ground into masa right away. Come on, boys. We must see that the corn gets through to Marco's abuela. The Tortilla Express is on the way. All right! Ah! Ah! So they took the corn to the mill where it was ground into masa and put in bags. Come on, boys. <laughs> then they took the bags to the warehouse where they were packaged for the stores. Huh? Ah, look at that. And to the store where they filled the shelves for customers. Here you go. Gracias. And finally, to Marco's house. <laughs> George was surprised. He always knew that Mr. Rankins grew corn, but he didn't realize that the food in the store and in people's homes came from farmers like his friend, Mr. Rankins. She's here! Until that day, George hadn't really thought about how important farmers were to so many people. Surprise! Ay, que bueno! Delicioso, mi amor! Marco's grandmother loved Marco's special tortillas. Mm. This is amazing. What a tortilla. But one person loved them most of all. I could eat a whole stack. Are there more? Ah! Nice. my cow. <laughs> we were playing baseball. Oh, did you touch a fence? <laughs> hey, can we borrow your grandpa's wash tub? Sure, what you working on? Wow, that's the greeniestest thing I have ever, never seen. Yeah, we know, but we'll get that slimy water out fast with this. <laughs> All together. One, two, three! That was the hardest 
I've worked in my whole entire life so far today. The hard work had made George thirsty, but he wasn't sure he trusted that straw. <gasps> but this time, it didn't go by itself. What was different? George tried again from lower down, like he did before. below the pitcher and gravity is pulling the lemonade out. <gasps> if the straw could drain a glass, what else could it drain? Ah. Is George going to drink the pool? George, don't drink the pool! <laughs> George wasn't going to drink the pool. He was going to drain it. Ah! <gasps> it's emptying itself! We oh, did it! We did it! it! Yes! How fast is it emptying? I think we need a bigger straw. Yeah, like a dinosaur straw. I don't think dinosaurs use straws. Dinosaurs didn't have hands, right? Right. So how'd they drink their milk? You got a point. Mm. Yeah. All George had to do was get the end of the hose below the water level, suck the water in, and then let gravity take over. But sucking water out of a hose was a lot harder than <laughs> sucking it out of a straw. <laughs> Too bad we don't have a dinosaur. A dinosaur would have that pool empty in a second. Hmm. <laughs> he was going to give it his best dinosaur try. You were below the water level and gravity pulled the water out. Ah. Mm -hmm. Hey, not bad for a city kid. <laughs> you did it, George! Yeah. <laughs> Hi, guys. My hose sprung a leak. Mind if I use yours, Bill? I gotta water my plants. Mm. George had one more idea. Great way to use a siphon. Hey, there's even a word for it. Now we just have to clean the inside of the pool, fill it back up, and we'll be swimming in no time. That's all. Cannonball! <laughs> <laughs> the water was cold and clean. So with a little help from a siphon, summer went swimmingly. On sunny, snowy days, <laughs> George usually got up bright and early. Day, he discovered that Bill had gotten up even brighter and earlier. Hey, George! <laughs> snow blocks. I'm building a house out of snow, although the correct term is igloo. <laughs> yep. I'm trying to earn my sprout badge in winter camping. And to do that, I have to build an igloo and sleep in it overnight. Ooh. Suddenly, that was exactly what George wanted to do. Build an igloo and sleep in it, just like Bill. <laughs> you want to help me? <laughs> and sleep in the igloo, too? <laughs> Why not? Let's 
get started. <laughs> George, that's not the proper technique. Guess I better show you. City kids probably don't know much about non-mortar construction. See? The first thing you do is mark a circle in the snow. That's your foundation. Then you take the biggest blocks and fit them together like this. Bill showed George how to build up the igloo walls block by block making sure that the top layer overlapped the bottom. Uh -huh. <laughs> yep, and when we're all done, we can just smooth out the inside. <laughs> As they built it up, the igloo started to look like a volleyball cut in half. See, we keep shaping these blocks and put them all the way around until there's just a small hole left in the center. And we fill that with a large block called a keystone. You have to cram it in so it'll hold the walls in place. <laughs> now, I'll just make a few air holes. And once we fill all these cracks of snow, it'll stay pretty warm. Uh. Yep, we're done. <laughs> Let's go check it out. <laughs> George was so excited. He had never been in an igloo before. The inside of the igloo was smaller than George thought. He had wanted a fun igloo. One that was big enough for a bed and a tuba and his friends. Sort of like his room, only better. build your own igloo? Uh -huh. Sure, I wish I could help you, but I gotta fill up these cracks and then do my chores. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So George started on his second igloo of the day with help from the man with the yellow cap. But this time, he built it wider and taller and brought in some furniture. Wow, good window. <laughs> Are you sure you want to spend the night in here, George? <laughs> Okie doke. I guess it's time to make the cocoa. Okay. Hey, George, how's it? Whoa, this is huge. You put a bed in here? <laughs> and a sofa? Oh. Wow. The only thing is, it might get cold at night. The bigger the igloo, the colder it gets. <laughs> George wasn't worried. He figured he'd just wear his coat to bed. Today was a busy day at George's apartment. Professor Wiseman was coming to dinner, and the man with the yellow hat wanted everything to be just right. I have an idea. Why don't I finish getting the apartment ready and you go to the store? Great, let's make a list. Okay. Okay, I need carrots for my famous carrot cake. Cucumbers for my famous cucumber soup. And uh, apples for my famous uh, bowl of apples. Here's a bag and some money, George, and have fun. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> when George got to their favorite store, it was closed. <laughs> the grocer was on his annual fishing trip. Oh. 
Welcome to Hua Mai Grocery and Takeout. It's our grand opening. Ooh. Our first customer. We are selling Vietnamese food. Please, try a sample. Cha Yo. It's a spring roll. <laughs> ah, come on in and... Uh, oh, oh, oh. Clean up on aisle three. George thought the food looked delicious, and the store looked beautiful. Hmm. But the fruits and vegetables looked different somehow. Hmm. This was green and long and bumpy. Hmm. Must be a cucumber. Next on the list, red round apples. This looked like an apple. Now all George needed to find were the carrots. <laughs> were these carrots? George didn't know for sure, but they looked like carrots and were bunched up like carrots. <laughs> ah! Customer number one. You ready? <laughs> ah, let's see. You have a ko kwa, uh, some fat too, and a few tak lu. Very good choices. <laughs> Here you are. Thank you very much. How was school today, Mai? Great, Dad. But who was that? Our very first customer. Our first customer was a monkey? <laughs> cool. <laughs> oh, great. Did you find everything? <laughs> oh. But this is a pomegranate, George, not an apple. Yes, and I don't know what these other things are. Uh, thanks, George. George decided that this time he'd ask for help. You're back. Hi, my name's Mai. Can I help you? Fatu, taklo, and kogwa. Yum! But didn't you just buy these? <laughs> uh, is that an alligator? <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't read this. <laughs> oh. In spring, good gardeners can't wait to get things growing. <laughs> Need any more help? Okay. I have to go help Professor Wiseman design a new terrarium. Bye, George. George had his seed system set. First he dug a hole, then he planted some seeds, then he covered the hole. Compass had a seed system too, but he didn't plant seeds. He ate them. He thought it was awfully nice of George to put out a pigeon buffet. thought this restaurant had weird rules. Maybe they weren't supposed to eat the seeds until George was finished. Or maybe you 
weren't supposed to eat while George was around. George wished there were two of him. And then he remembered. Farmer Rankins protected his garden from the birds with a scarecrow. So George decided to make a scarecrow too. Scary. <laughs> Maybe the birds were only scared away when something was moving. <laughs> that was it. But how could he get it to move? He also needed more seeds. Seeds were easy. Making a scarecrow move was hard. I heard a guy named Quixote opened a new bakery up ahead. Hungry? It was the biggest pinwheel George had ever seen. Pretty neat, huh? It's a windmill. Ooh. Yep, <laughs> it grinds my grain for me. Ah. <laughs> Let me show you how it works. When the wind blows, it pushes the sails. Just like wind pushes a sailboat along the water. But since sails are attached to the mill, instead of moving forward, they spin around. George's friend Allie really flipped for flips, even when she wasn't doing the flipping. Did you see that? Yeah. Uh -huh. The annual gymnastic tournament was right up Allie's alley. Next year, that's going to be me. <gasps> Here comes another one. The gymnastic tournament was for gymnasts of all ages. There were girl gymnasts and boy gymnasts. And. A bug gymnast? <laughs> Next up is that bundle of dynamite. George? Uh, uh, on the floor, Matt. <laughs> well, uh, I mean the balance beam. Oh. Uh, well, uh, I guess I mean the uneven parallel bars. Or do I? Uh, I mean George on the the rings uh, there. Uh, yeah, I give up. Didn't mean to disrupt things. 
You are a natural born gymnast. You've got to come to my gymnastics class. Huh? Oh. You teach gymnastics? I want to come too. Me too. Really? Do you know how strong your arms have to be to do gymnastics? Imagine how far a guy could throw a newspaper. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. See you at the community center tomorrow for an introduction to the class. Three o'clock. See ya. Uh -huh. Oh, I bet we'll be tumbling in no time. This gym equipment. <laughs> but before you can tumble, you have to stretch. Stretching is one of the three S's of gymnastics. Ow! Stretching, S number one. <laughs> and stretch and stretch. Tricky, too. Oops. Find a spot to focus on. If you stare at something still, huh? <laughs> it helps you be still, too. <laughs> Go ahead. Give it a try. <laughs> ah, the rings take a lot of strength. We'll work our way up to it. Hey, you can practice with a bench until your back, arms, and chest are strong enough to pull you up. time to talk about our other two S's. Safety and supervision. You should always have someone spotting you. <laughs> it was George's first spring day back in the country. Already, he was starring in a movie. Hiya, Mr. Rankins. Yeah. Hi, Bill. George? Okay, George. You go in first and see if there are any baby ducks running around. <laughs> <laughs> I'll follow with my camcorder. <laughs> this will make a great scene for my science project about baby animals. This is Bill bringing you baby ducks, live from the Rankin's Bar. Hey! We're in luck. The ducklings haven't hatched yet. They're still inside their eggs. Sure, George. Look. You and me and other mammals come into the world as babies. But birds, ducks for example, come as eggs. Oh. <laughs> yep, Dumpling's babies will hatch from these eggs, as long as she sits on them to keep them warm. <laughs> Sprouts on her, George. If she doesn't sit on them, they'll get cold and never hatch. Oh, my battery died. I'll have to get another one. Don't let the eggs hatch without me, okay? Uh -huh. 
Where was Dumpling going? She was supposed to be keeping her eggs warm. still warm, but if Dumpling didn't come back soon... <gasps> George decided that if Dumpling wasn't going to sit on her eggs, he'd have to do it. <laughs> Carefully. <sighs> well, sitting on a nest, hatching eggs, is actually pretty boring. Thanks for loaning me a battery, sir. No problem. I think that's great you're filming a duck hatching. No! Oh! <laughs> this I've got to get on tape. Bill here bringing you a first. A city kid sitting on a nest of duck eggs. George, why are you sitting on a nest of duck eggs? <laughs> Looks like he's trying to keep Dumpling's eggs warm. Wow! I don't believe it. A duck is hatching right before my very eyes. On camera! Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Rankins, you don't want to miss this. Your ducks are hatching. We'll, we'll be, be right, right there. there. Quack, 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 quack,